We begin today's show with a historic development in the campaign to end the controversial police policy of stop and frisk. New York City's newly elected mayor, Bill de Blasio, has announced the city will drop its appeal of a ruling by a U.S. district court that found the program unconstitutional and settle an ongoing lawsuit. In August, uh, Judge Shira Schindlin criticized the police for relying on a, quote, policy of indirect racial profiling that led officers to routinely stop, quote, blacks and Hispanics who would not have been stopped if they were white. Former Mayor Mike Bloomberg had criticized the court ruling, saying it made officers passive and scared to frisk suspects. During Bloomberg's three terms in office, innocent New Yorkers were subjected to more than four million stops and frisks. Mayor de Blasio delivered the news at a community center in Brownsville, Brooklyn, a predominantly African-American community that's had more stop and frisks than any other part of the city. We're here today to turn the page on one of the most divisive problems in our city. We believe in this administration, I think this reflects the values of the people of New York City broadly, we believe in one city where everyone rises together. We believe in respecting every New Yorker's rights, regardless of what neighborhood they live in or the color of their skin. And we believe in ending the overuse of stop and frisk that has unfairly targeted young African American and Latino men. We believe in our obligation, the most fundamental one that there is in government, to keep people safe. And the values and the strategies that keep people safe and that really give us lasting safety, those values are not compatible with a broken and misused stop and frisk policy. Neither the police commissioner nor I believe is acceptable when 90 percent of the people stopped and frisked are innocent of any crime. And so we are taking significant corrective action to fix what is broken. I'm proud to announce today that the City of New York is taking a major step to resolve the years-long legal battle over stop and frisk, and that we have reached accord with the plaintiffs in the landmark Floyd versus City of New York case. We are doing it through a collective commitment to fix the fundamental problems that enable stop and frisk to grow out of control and violate the rights of innocent New Yorkers. The agreement we're announcing today accepts the facts and the roadmap laid out in last August's landmark federal court ruling. Those points include, one, a joint and ongoing reform process with direct police community dialogue ensuring that policies which are driving police and community apart are raised through a direct line of communication with the police leadership. Two, there will be for three years a court-appointed monitor to ensure the police department's compliance with the United States Constitution. And that limited period of oversight is contingent upon us meeting our obligations. Three, I want to emphasize as an explanation that this is a shorter window of monitoring than is customary, and that is in part because of our administration's explicit commitment to reform, including the installation of an independent NYPD Inspector General. The fourth point I want to make, once this resolution is confirmed by the Federal District Court, the City of New York will officially drop its appeal in this case. That was New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio speaking Thursday. As he announced that the city would move forward with reforming stop and frisk, he was joined by his new police commissioner, Bill Bratton. Bratton returns to the job after leading the NYPD in the mid-1990s when he embraced a controversial strategy of cracking down on low-level offenses and later expanded the program while leading the Los Angeles Police Department. Well, yesterday, Bratton welcomed the new direction New York will take. For too many young men in the city, particularly young men of color, hundreds of thousands over the last several years, knowing that the city had experienced historic crime declines, they could not understand the significant increase in stop, question, and frisk, and they understandably asked, why? Why me? For the many young officers in our department, also aware that the crime rates had gone down so significantly, but they were being encouraged to make more arrests, make more stops, 
make more questions and frisks as part of their day-to-day -day procedure. Those police officers were rightfully asking, why more? So the two entities, the public and the police, the two entities most affected by this policy in the inappropriate way in which it was being applied, shared a commonality of concern. Why me? Why more? These actions that we are announcing today, moving us toward resolution, toward a comprehensive reform are essential. They are necessary to ensure that the fabric of society that much ex must exist between police and the community is in fact rewoven so that we come out of this process stronger than before. And we can do that. And the challenge is we must do that. That's New York City's Police Commissioner Bill Bratton speaking Thursday. Well, for more, we'll be joined by Bahar Azmi, legal director for the Center for Constitutional Rights Council on their stop and frisk lawsuit against the city of New York involved in the negotiations with the city that led to the settlement Thursday. This is Democracy Now! We'll be back in a minute.